No more Mr. Nice Guy. In late October, tour boss Christian Prudhomme presented the 2016 route, surely one of the most challenging in recent history. Seventeen stages had at least some climbing, starting with the fifth stage, which included six rated climbs, two of them second category. To make things even more challenging, instead of some less difficult stages between the Pyrenees and the Alps, an ascent of Mont Ventoux was put in between the two mountain ranges. The race might very well come down to being a test of brute endurance. Who will have the legs to survive the 21 stages? Loaded with history, the first stage started from Mont Saint-Michel off France's northern coast and finished on Omaha Beach, one of the beaches chosen for the D-Day Allied landing. Mark Cavendish, perhaps the fastest living road sprinter, won the stage and took his first ever yellow jersey. But one of the major contenders for final victory, Alberto Contador, crashed. He finished with the same time as the pack, but it was a bad start. Cavendish didn't get to hold on to his yellow jersey for long. Peter Sagan timed his effort perfectly at the end of the second stage to claim both the stage win and his first yellow jersey. And yet again, Contador went down. The next few stages were sprinters' playthings, with the GC contenders just trying to keep their skins attached and their bikes upright. But the first real challenge came in that fifth stage. The sole survivor of a break that went clear only 21 kilometers into the stage, Greg Van Avermaet, came in alone to win not only the stage, but the GC lead. The big stuff came with stage 7, including the 72nd ascent of the huge Col d'Espin. Stephen Cummings went away with nearly 30 kilometers to go to claim the stage, but Van Avermaet did well enough to retain his leadership. The contenders began floating toward the top of the GC standings. Stage 8 had the tourmalet almost at the gun, and was one of the three stages with finishes after a descent from a big mountain, this time the Paris Sourde. 2013 and 2015 winner Chris Froome tried to get clear on the Paris Sourde descent, but could not get a gap. And then, bam! He attacked on the descent to win the stage and the yellow jersey. It was a stunning move. The race got no easier in stage 9 with three category 1 climbs and a formidable hilltop finish at Andorra Arcalis. The stage began with a bang, with high speeds and plenty of aggression. It was too much for Contador, who had awakened that morning with a fever. After 100 kilometers, he climbed into the team car and abandoned the tour. A break of about 20 non-contenders went away, and from that escape, Tom Dumoulin rode away under falling rain and hail to take the stage. The yellow jersey group was unworried and finished more than six minutes later. Frum remained the leader by 16 seconds over British rider Adam Yates. It was clear at the end of stage 11 that Froome wasn't going to just wait for the time trials and mountains. World champion Peter Sagan attacked with just 12 kilometers to go, and almost immediately Froome and a couple of other riders were on his wheel. Sagan won the stage, but Froome was second, collecting the time bonus as well as the six-second gap to the first chasing group. Everyone was waiting for stage 12's ascent of Mont Ventoux. High winds prompted the organizers to shorten the stage by six kilometers. Thomas de Ghent won the stage from a breakaway, but it was what happened behind him that mattered. Three and a half kilometers from the finish, BMC rider Richie Port hit a TV motorbike, taking down Froome and Balki Malema. Froome's response was to get up and start running up the hill while waiting for his team to bring him a new bike. The bike arrived, but the incident cost Froome nearly a minute and a half. Later, the judges reviewed the incident and decided no one should suffer a time loss from the accident. Froome was still in yellow. The Tour's only real time trial came the next day. Tom Dumoulin was fastest, but Froome came in second, proving he was a complete rider. Stage 15 was another day in the mountains, and again a break was allowed to romp away, but Froome didn't waste a single watt and finished with the contenders to stay in the lead. Stage 17 was a beast of a day in the Swiss Alps, featuring a difficult hilltop finish. On the final ascent, three riders went away, and from that trio, Ilner Zakarin was able to escape. He came in alone to win the prestigious stage. Further back, Richie Port attacked, drawing Froome and Colombian hope, Nairo Quintana. Quintana, apparently suffering from either allergies or a virus, could not stay with the pair and had to let them go. Port led Froome across the line. The move increased Froome's lead to 2 minutes 27 seconds over Balki Molema. The following day was a 17-kilometer timed hill climb. Froome was second to no one that day. Nairo Quintana's fans had hoped he would be able to use the day's steep profile to gain time on Froome, but that was a job no one could do. 
Stage 19 was another day in the high Alps, with a hard rain to make the day even tougher. The slippery roads caused numerous crashes, including second place Balki Malema. Romain Bardet gave France its first stage win this tour, a move that brought Bardet up to second place in the GC after Malema's big time loss from his crash. Again Froome went down, this time after sliding on a center line made slippery in the rain. He was quickly up and finished in good order, actually increasing his overall lead. The penultimate stage was another day of grim weather in the high mountains. Froome was carefully escorted by his team and stayed safely out of trouble. While several sprinters had abandoned during the second rest day, there were still plenty of speedsters to contest the tour finale on the Champs-Élysées. André Greipel won his second consecutive final tour stage, and Froome, with his extraordinarily powerful and complete sky team, finished the stage safely. Froome had joined Philippe Thais, Louis Bobet, and Greg LeMond in the three-time Tour de France Winners Club.